of the Rome Statute in Ghanaian mm -hmm. law hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. Um, say that last year we, at the African Center of International Criminal Justice, we hosted the and by the way, and um, that we had the pleasure of having His Excellency the President of Ghana, Nana Dudan Kwakufuado, gracing the occasion, and he made the commitment during that lecture that Ghana was going to take steps to ratify the Rome Statute, Ghana being one of the founding members of the Rome Statute and the ICC, that it was time that we took concrete steps to ratify the statute so that it becomes part of our domestic laws. And as you know, with international law, if the president executes any treaty before it becomes part of our laws, it has to be domesticated either through a resolution adopted by parliament or an act of parliament and all that. So that hasn't been done, but we believe that um, the processes are ongoing um, for that to happen um, anytime soon. Okay, let's move to uh, additional crimes. Uh, last year, the International Criminal Court uh, spoke uh, long and hard about the crime of aggression and mm -hmm. uh, nobody seems to understand what that means um, uh, brief and what it means and why it's being added to the list of possible crimes uh, against so, humanity. Yeah, so the crime of aggression is simply waging unjust wars or using force um, for no justif justifiable reason. So going to war, for instance, waging war um, by one country against another country would amount to um, the crime of aggression or using force to enter into the territorial jurisdiction of another sovereign state would amount to aggression. And the reason why this has finally been um, um, fallen within the domain of the ICC is that it is one of the core, one of the, the, the precursors to the crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity, war crimes that we are accustomed to, these things usually occur within the context of a conflict. So where one state or an entity uses unjustifiable force and ventures into the territory of another state and engage in um, um, an international armed conflict, for instance, there's the likelihood that international crimes like genocide, crimes against humanity or war crimes may be committed. And so it's important that the crime of aggression itself, waging that unjustifiable war itself is prohibited so that we hold those persons who take those steps into um, take those steps um, in respect of um, aggression we hold them liable to sort of try to um, prevent other crimes from happening so I believe that's why it's within the jurisdiction of the ICC and it's a, it's, it's a good thing okay before I let you go final question it's, it's a good thing okay before I let you go final question and you know um, we're not going to get into the details, but there are three, mm -hmm. three methods by which cases come before the ICC. Mm -hmm. Not to delve into the, the dynamics of all yes. of that, but speaking to the, the use of the Security Council mm -hmm. uh, and that particular form, where the Security mm -hmm. Council, by, by its own resolution, decides that it, it, will, allow, it will request the ICC refer situation, refer yes. situation country. Uh, can, is that not open to misuse, uh, simply because the, the membership of the, ICC, of, of the Security, Security Council, Council is a permanent membership? And then they influence what, who gets uh, pushed before the ICC. Is that not a problem? Yes, that 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 is a problem um, to an extent. And this issue came up during the the drafting process of the Rome Statute. How the ICC was to be put into um, a relationship with the United Nations, whether the ICC should be an organ within the United Nations or it should be a separate entity. At the end of the day, the latter approach was adopted. But still, the Security Council was given a role, like you rightly mentioned, in terms of referrals of situations. Uh, and I think um, um, the point needs to be made that the Security Council. Council is that body under the United Nations Charter, which is given the mandate to determine whenever there's a threat to international peace or an actual breach of international peace and security, which is the main aim of the United Nations, maintaining international peace and security, so that um, the framers thought it wise that the UN being that world body uh, made up of all, almost all states of the world, and the Security Council being essentially the enforcement arm of the United Nations should be given that leeway way to from time to time when they determine that any situation happening in any part of the world which may possibly lead to the commission of such international crimes which fall within the jurisdiction of the ICC, they should be able to refer such a situation to the ICC for possible prosecution. But we also need to understand that the fact that the Security Council makes that referral doesn't automatically mean that the ICC will be seized of jurisdiction. There has to be investigations done. Um, the pre 
pretrial chamber has to actually um, accept that the prima facie case exists before it would, uh, it would um, essentially give way for prosecution to happen if possible. But we also also need to appreciate the fact that the Security Council can also be asked to defer such referrals. And that's what led to this whole ICC targeting Africa issue, which became very topical in a few um, um, in, in years past because of the Omar al-Bashir situation, the Darfur situation, where um, the Security Council essentially was the body that referred the Darfur situation to the ICC, and the African Union Peace and Security Council requested pursuant to the Rome Statute for the Security Council to defer those investigations, to defer that referral, and the Security Council refused. So it was after that incident, the refusal of the Security Council to defer the referral of Omar al-Bashir, sitting African head of state, that led to the problems that the ICC has been facing um, for a very long time in terms of perception, in terms of being biased against Africa. But we need to understand the fact that African states represented the largest bloc that um, adopted the Rome Statute, that came together fighting for the Rome Statute to be adopted in the first place. And in the early years when the ICC was in existence and the cases, um, the situations were being investigated by the ICCs, a majority of those situations were state referrals. That's another way in which ICC will be seized with jurisdiction. The African states themselves referred situations in their countries to the ICC to investigate. So I'll give you a quick example. Uganda, the Lord's Resistance Army issue. Yoruba Museveni, the president of Uganda in 2003, referred the Lord's Resistance Army situation in Uganda to the ICC for investigation and subsequent prosecution um, and all that. So it's, it's, we, we need to understand all these things and understand the fact that the ICC's jurisdiction is complementary Regardless of the fact that um, the Security Council can refer a situation to the ICC, the fact that the states themselves can refer a situation or that the prosecutor using her proprio motu powers can instigate an investigation into a situation um, um, in any part, um, in a state's party, the ICC's jurisdiction is complementary in the sense that the state's parties themselves are the first point of call when an international crime is supposed, um, um, is allegedly committed. They have the power to be able to prosecute such offenses. It's where they are unwilling to or unable to that the ICC's jurisdiction can be invoked. So we need to understand the complementarity principle um, within that context too. Mm. Yeah, Doc, uh, I won't uh, um, uh, belabor at the, the, what I was going to say next, which is the obvious next question, but for another, com uh, it will be, I'll use that for another conversation. Uh, oh. But I want to thank you today uh, for sharing this knowledge on this International Criminal Justice Day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank I you appreciate very it. much. Dr. Ajimambudu is the head of law centers at GIMPA. GIMPA has been featured much today. They've been all over the place. All the lecturers have been on uh, SASE. I want to thank them for all the hard work that they do. You know, the obvious next question, Danea, is when, when the minute uh, we, 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 they say that,